Tonight on It's Me or the Dog, Victoria's toughest challenge yet as she takes on two would-be wolves no one can control. Ooh, he's very strong, isn't he? Strong isn't the word, Victoria. And that terrify the neighbourhood. I am frightened. I live in fear. <laughs> Also tonight, oh my goodness me! Victoria meets a woman who has no problem controlling her 32 huskies. Ho, ho. <laughs> the Colangelo family have two big dogs with great big problems. <laughs> Molly is a Belgian Shepherd with a major attitude problem. Molly is what I would describe as um, an erotic bitch. Her aggressive personality has the entire neighbourhood running scared. <laughs> Alfie is a northern Inuit who's a total yob. Inside the house, he's an absolute nightmare. He howls the house down and destroys anything he gets his jaws on. The leather puff, he's had a go at my settee. I've lost count of the number of pairs of shoes that he's had a go at. Absolute nightmare. And there's nothing Molly and Alfie like more than taking their owners for a walk. I can't take them out and exercise them properly. It's just such a trauma to do that. <laughs> <laughs> For them, it's fun. It must be fun. Yeah, oh, they, they do as they it. like, and we're just following them, really. But, you know, it's just something to get over and done with as fast as she can. Whoa, whoa. He's only in the canter, and I'm already knackered. Whoa. <laughs> What's worse, the dog's disruptive behaviour has brought the Colangelo's entire neighbourhood to its knees. The dogs constantly bark, and if there's nobody around to shut them up, then they just continue to bark. It's now reached crisis in the close. It's come to the point with the neighbours now where we don't really speak, frankly. If things don't get better with the dog's behaviour, then Linda and Caesar will make enemies of everybody in the close. So who takes care of these uncontrollable nuts? Mum Linda tries her best. I feed them. I have to pick up all the dog poo from the garden because nobody else bothers to do it. That's it. Oh. Dad, Caesar, does very little. Caesar will probably be sleeping on the computer or uh, watching television. My husband lets them get away with murder. Absolutely murder. I love them too much, you know. But, You're not uh, doing them any favours. No, I oh, know. Ah, so stretch your legs then, go on. Stretch your legs, oh. His family are sick of it and believe he loves the dogs more than them. He spoils the dogs way too much. He treats them like his kids rather than we're his kids. If, like, the dog's on the settee, I'll be like, Dad, I want to sit down and be like, don't move the dog, don't touch the dog. I feel like he cares for them more than us. Um, he's got photos of them on his computer. I think he's got more photos of the dogs than us. The Colangelo family are at breaking point. I know you've got to be called kind of all that rubbish, but well, yes. I, just can't, I just can't with the dog. Yeah. Well, you're going to have to learn. I can't cope with it anymore. No, no. I'm stressed. No. I find the fact that Caesar doesn't listen to me when um, I'm asking for help really upsetting. It can make me cry. There's only one woman who can help them. Victoria Stillwell. When you take on big dogs, you take on a lot of work. It's a huge commitment of time and effort. And if you can't control them, their bad behavior will affect the entire family, which is exactly what's happened to the Colangelo family. Victoria's arrived to sort things out. What is life like living in his house with them then? Um, well, everything's taken over by the dogs, really. For me, in particular, I'm the one that worries about them if they don't go for a walk in the evening. I'm the one that has to clear up after them. I feed them. Why don't you clean things up when you see them? Linda suffers. Well, I just get the enjoyment. You know, if they break something, Linda clears it up. Uh, if they make a mess, Linda clears it up. Alfie, get down. Down. 
True to form, Alfie sabotages their chat. And although Linda tries to gain control... Get down! As usual, Caesar does nothing. Oh, my Oi. God! Oh, my goodness Alfie, me. get down! My first reaction to this is that Caesar is letting his dogs get away with everything and that he's soft on them and that he's spoiling them. And Linda is desperately trying to get control but doesn't have his support. Outside, Victoria's about to see firsthand why these dogs only get a few hours walk a week. Whoa, 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 come here. Come here, come here. He's very strong, isn't he? Strong isn't the word, Victoria. Come here. This isn't a walk, is it? It's a drag. Yeah, it's a drag. With their dogs so out of control, Linda and Caesar are too scared to ever let them off the lead. It's no wonder that these dogs aren't walked because it's just not pleasurable. Caesar and Linda have no control over them, and it's not the dog's fault. It really is their fault. And when nature calls, Caesar passes on the poop scope. Did you just pass the bag to Linda? Yes. No, so that asked. Linda could pick up the poo? I'm a typical man, I'm yeah. guilty of that. I'm guilty of that. Always and I, does that. I, I, I do feel bad about it, Linda. No, you don't. I don't, no. You are going to be prime poo man oh, now. Oh, my God, Linda. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm going to be really, I'm, I'm going to love this. <laughs> there so you are. Yes. I think Linda is in a difficult place because although Caesar loves the dogs, he's actually not prepared to put in the real work. For goodness sake, he doesn't even pick up the dog's poo when they're walking together. I'm sick and tired of being the only one that seems to be accountable and responsible for their um, behaviour and their welfare. Do you think Caesar needs to take more responsibility? Yes. Yes, I think he does. But he needs to know that as well. He'll know that. Good. He'll know that. Good. Victoria's seen enough. She's convinced that Caesar must understand exactly what effect his behavior's having on his family. So Mum and the kids have written down some long overdue home truths to hit Dad with. Life in this house isn't fair. You treat the dogs better than you do me and Stephen. Please will you start disciplining the dogs and treat them like dogs, not like your favorite children. I feel like you look after the dogs rather than our needs. Um, it's not fair on us, really, that they get treated better than we do. I've had enough of arguing, and I want us to work together as a family to try and overcome the problems that we have with the dogs, instead of just copping out and just having all the nice bits and not taking any responsibility. What do you have to say to your family? I am sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I cannot train these dogs until I see positive action from you. And if you tell me now that you can't change, I will walk out that door. I will do my utmost to change because I want, the dog, well, I want my family to have their life back mm. and as well as their dogs as well, to have a, a, a nice life. I will do my utmost. I think that was very difficult for Caesar to hear, but he needed to hear it. And I just hope that his reaction wasn't just lip service, that he actually is going to take positive action. Because you can talk all you like, you can say sorry all you like, but unless you take action, it means nothing. The comments my family have made today about me, I've taken on board and they are right. I've got nothing in my defence to say why I do it. It is true. Well, I've got a defence, I know why I do it, um, but I can't deny it. That's uh, news. After hearing what his family has to say, Caesar tells Victoria the real reason he can't bear to deal with his dogs. He hasn't managed to overcome the death of his previous pet, Neo. His death was very sudden, and how do you feel when, how did you feel when he died? I was devastated. I didn't go for work to work. I was, I was crying, and uh, he had such an effect on me. And my, my guilt is uh, I didn't really appreciate him being here. And now, probably, I'm overcompensating with Alfie. This is the reason I'm soft with the dogs. All right, so yeah, it's he's so traumatised that he still keeps the ashes of his dead dog. I think it's going to be difficult for you to put Neo behind you. And of course, he's still very important, and he's still going to be part of all your memories. But I think you need to move on. Okay. 
Victoria wants to help Caesar get over the death of his previous pet, Neo, before he can focus on training Molly and Alfie. Because this is Neo's memorial. And I know that especially how sensitive it is when somebody loses a pet. What I want to do is give you this tree so you can plant it in your garden. And also what I got for you is a little, a little pluck as well oh. to, to hang by the tree in memory of Neo. Instead of scattering his ashes, this tree will mark the passing away of Neo. It's actually quite fitting, really, that it goes there, so that when the dogs are out there, it's... Nine months, he had this effect, honestly. Nine months. I think it was quite hard for Caesar and Linda to, to plant that tree, but in a way it was a cathartic experience. They've got the beautiful memory of Neo there that's going to grow every year into a beautiful tree, yet they can pull their focus away onto Molly and Alfie and do the training that is needed. Victoria's in Peterborough with two uncontrollable hounds. All their problems could be solved with one simple solution the Colangelos are avoiding like the plague. These dogs are out of control. Alfie is destroying the house. Molly is barking so much that the neighbors are complaining and the close is in crisis. And it all boils down to one thing. Because they're bad on the lead, they are not getting enough exercise. But today, I am gonna change all that. And it's going to start with Dad Caesar, who hasn't been pulling his weight with the dogs. Caesar, these dogs need a lot more exercise to deal with all of their behaviour problems, and you have to pull your weight because Linda can't do it all by herself. No. Well, I'll give my word, I will do my utmost. Linda and Caesar can't even manage to get the dogs out of the door calmly, let alone take them for a walk. Victoria's going to show them that clear instruction is key to taking control. She fits special head collars to stop the dogs from pulling. Every single time he goes to the door, if I haven't asked him to, I'm going to shut the door. Bit by bit, the door is opened, and Alfie is taught to resist the urge to surge. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Within minutes, Alfie gets the message. OK. For the first time ever, he heads for the gate calmly. Caesar and Linda are amazed. What a good boy. That experience was 100% better than what they normally are. But getting out of the house is only the beginning. Victoria now needs to apply the brakes to the powerful pulling. Each time Alfie starts to tug, she turns him in the opposite direction. Eventually, he learns that dragging Victoria gets him nowhere. Good boy! Now it's Caesar's turn. Will he finally be able to take control? If he's walking too much ahead of you, you don't like it, just pull it back a little bit. That's it. But it doesn't come easy. Oh, no, 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 come here, come back. That's it. And don't say no, 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 come back. Uh, uh. All you say is ah. Sorry about I know it's difficult. Sorry. And then say, let's go, as you turn let's around. Let's go. That's it. At last, Caesar is actually walking Alfie, rather than Alfie ah. walking Caesar. Let's go. Victoria, look how loose my fingers yeah. are on. It's... And you are really not putting a lot of pressure on that head None collar. whatsoever, look, none whatsoever. Good. Take us home, Caesar. Caesar's beginning to realise that with proper training, you get incredible results. <laughs> It's wonderful, nice feeling. I was actually taking the dog for a walk and not the dog actually dragging me through the hedge or the gate or whatever, as you saw earlier on today. It's, it was a nice feeling. Now the Colangelos can walk the dogs, there's no excuse for Alfie and Molly's destructive chewing. I can't stress to you how important it is that these dogs get out twice a day and for good walks. That's the number one way you stop chewing. So by the time they get back, they're so tired, they sleep. But just to be certain, all temptations locked away. Excellent. <coughs> Perfect. Can't get those doors open. And tough chew toys are introduced as alternatives to the family's shoes, coats and bags. 
But with no exercise or clear commands, you can count on a northern Inuit like Alfie and a Belgian shepherd like Molly playing up. They're working dogs, so they need lots of mental and physical stimulation. To find out how important exercise and instruction are to dogs like these, Victoria's on her way to meet an expert. Sally Leach lives with all these huskies. I don't think I've ever been in a room with so many dogs before. <laughs> Have you not? No. <laughs> Sally's been a husky fanatic right. for over 30 years. It's amazing how well adjusted these dogs are and you know you have 32 of them whereas people who have just one or two dogs seem to have lost complete control. I think it's really important that the animals just like children I suppose have clear boundaries. They need a lot of exercise, and a very active life, a lot of interest in their life. They, if they're bored, they become destructive. So, to keep this giant pack in check, Sally turns to the 2,000-year-old tradition of husky racing. What about the configuration of these dogs? Do you put dogs in certain places? Yes, well, I mean, the lead dogs are probably the most important dogs on the team because they have to listen to you, plus set the pace, keep the line out. Mm -hmm. And you tend to have your bigger dogs at the back, um, what we call wheel dogs, because they take the most jerking from the, the vehicle they're pulling. I, ha I have to have a go. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Incredibly, the dogs can pull the quad bike at up to 20 miles an hour. Racing huskies are trained to respond to specific commands. Hike is get going, whoa is put the brakes on, G is right, and hop is left. Hop, hop. Good dogs. Hop means left. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Hop, hop. I do think it's really important that dogs do get clear signals from their owners, especially with Molly and Alfie, who really don't know where they are because there's no consistency and no clear communication. With these dogs, they've been trained well. They know exactly what to do when a command is issued, and they're having fun, and that is the most important thing. This is a great way to use up lots of energy for working dogs, but it's slightly impractical for the Colangelos back in Peterborough. So Victoria's got an idea. I brought you here today because I have a little surprise for you, which I think you and the dogs are going to love. It's called Canny Cross. Eileen and Andrew are being tugged along by their huskies, Pacha and Alexi. Oh, wow. Yeah. I hope you can run. <laughs> oh, God. It's perfect for Alfie and Molly, who've always pulled their owners when out and about. It's also good exercise for couch potato Caesar. How do you feel about this? I think the dogs will enjoy it probably more than what we will. This activity is one fun run for the dogs. And because they pull the extra weight of their owners, they get one hell of a workout. How does that feel? That looks fantastic. I enjoyed it. But for the first time, they could actually run with us. Are you exhausted? I need a medal, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but it's really, really was really good fun. Well, I think this is something you should definitely do, because I think it's going to be so beneficial for your dogs and so beneficial for you too. On the way home, it's Caesar's turn to pull his weight with the dogs. When there's a poop to scoop, he must do his bit. Caesar is now picking up a steaming great poopy. <laughs> Whenever you're walking Belinda, you're down. gonna do it. Yeah. And that's when I'm not here as well. <laughs> it's the end of Victoria's training regime. She's done the groundwork. The rest is up to Caesar and Linda. Now, all of this training will be for nothing. If you do not keep on with it, and if you are not consistent. Therefore, I'm looking at you, Caesar Colangelo. You better keep this training up. And if you don't, I will come down on you like a ton of bricks. I'll give you my word, I will do my utmost to continue. 
Over the next two weeks, the Colangelos throw themselves into Victoria's training. Wait. As Caesar starts to do his bit Wait. to show authority, little by little, the dogs start to listen. Sit. Wait. The main changes I've noticed um, is actually getting the dogs out the front door to the gate. Wait. Wait. Sit. Now it's a pleasure to actually do that, whereas before we were just dragged out there. Although it's still too early to let the dogs off their leads, they're responding well to commands, and it shouldn't be long now before they can run free. On the walk itself, Alfie pulls less now than he used to before. Let's go. If anything, probably on the whole walk, he might only pull probably two or three times. Just giving the dogs regular exercise has meant the bored barking has ceased, and the once terrified neighbours can at last relax. Alfie doesn't bark at all, he's very quiet. The dogs are in the garden, no barking. Brilliant. Now Victoria's back to see the improvement for herself. Wait. Look at that, Victoria. I mean, can you, can you believe that? That was really impressive, Caesar. That's extremely good. Oh, I'm, I'm proud of it myself, you know. Good boy. The dogs have come on leaps and bounds, but it's time for the million dollar question. Is Caesar finally taking responsibility for Molly and Alfie? Caesar, I've got to ask you. Have you been picking up the poo? Oh, I have, I have. Yes, I have. Linda, I'm going to ask you for the truth. Has he been picking up the poo? He picks it up most of the time. It is a big improvement on what it was before. The whole family have noticed the difference. It is a big shock that he's actually changed and things that around the house have changed. Now life has improved so much more that we have time when we go out on walks that we can actually spend speaking to each other instead of worrying about what the dogs are going to do. My role has changed because now I take a bit more responsibility, clearing up the dog mess, and just general with the dogs helping out Linda a lot more. When I first came here, the dogs were tearing the family apart. Now the dogs and the family are transformed, and they've made this a real success.